today. Uh, one of the questions that I've been getting a lot in the comments section, which I, I do read, is uh, why do you keep talking about Corey Good and David Wilcock and Cosmic Disclosure? You know, why do you keep doing it? And um, the answer to that is because of uh, folks like the person sitting next to me. You see, new people, hundreds of thousands a week, according to Corey Good himself, in his interview with Divine Frequency, hundreds of thousands of people a week are getting clicked on to this show. And uh, we have one of them uh, right here who is going to be uh, giving you her take on what she's seen and uh, the, the little bit of the show that she, she has on. So, Cosmic Disclosure. Thank you. So, I, list, I uh, listened recently to some of uh, Mr. Good's and Mr. Wilcox's stories, and I find them very creative. Extremely creative, in fact, but hugely unbelievable. They seem to have taken parts of Batman and Robin. One the hero, but not without his sidekick. There are some unexplained glitches uh, in the Mars stories, and I'd like to have some real questions answered, not those that were obviously preset ahead of time and well rehearsed. So you think that um, the dialogue between Wilcock and Corey Good were, were sort of rehearsed ahead of time. Well, Is that that's your sense? That's my sense. I would think so. Um, who would just go and talk about something without some rehearsal and that they both, uh, you know, feel the same way about this space exploration? Mm -hmm. And that leads to actually a good question. Uh, and, and I've not asked you any of these questions ahead of time. We've no, not prepared them. you did. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't prepared any of this ahead of time. Uh, but, but, you know, that does lead to a good point which is how much of this seems kind of overly rehearsed. Um, and one thing that strikes me in watching Cosmic Disclosure now for the third time, I've watched all the, the seasons. You know, I think, uh, I'm not sure, how much of it did you actually watch? Not very much, just beginning. Okay. Not sure if I will continue unless some of my questions might be answered. Okay. So what are some of those, uh, the questions that kind of are glaring that jump out to you well, one is regarding transportation. Mr. Good said that one can transport oneself, um, like he did, I believe, by using mental telepathy. So, if that's a fact, why use inadequate earthly inventions outdated, like rockets that travel encased in clouds? How do these clouds stay constant without dissipating? Yeah, there was a big, there was a big conversation in the first season about clouds in space and how they they dissipate or they don't and then there's some kind of cloaking technology that Corey Good talks about and so to you it, it doesn't make it, it doesn't make sense there's no quality explanation as to what what the whole point is correct and you know um, I was wondering if uh, maybe or, these clouds are like the comet that took believers to heaven it didn't sound right or they encased in plastic or some <laughs> something I don't know I, I can see how anyone I mean we all travel in in planes and we do go through clouds and they don't stay around us all the time mm -hmm. so that was one thing mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, once on Mars Mr. Good disappoints a listener like myself uh, and should have came up with a better story frankly that using electricity and, and earthly inventions on Mars, why not just will the body through telepathy, not to feel the cold, and not need those earthly, uh, you know, helps. Because mm -hmm. he talked a great deal about doing telepathic communication with uh, these blue avians and these aliens that he's in contact with, because Corey Good you know, the insider's insider was an intuitive empath with precognition abilities. That's how he's built himself. And even on the SphereBeingAlliance.com website or BlueAvians.com, he talks, you know, he talks in his bio about having been a military abductee and he has these kind of precognitive skills, right? Well, I, it's not that I do not believe in some form of mental telepathy. I believe that's valid. However, when you're talking about distances like Mars, 
uh, it takes time to get there. So I find that a little bit unbelievable there. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, he talks about bringing engineers. Well, who cares about shelters and bringing engineers to set up the new Earth on Mars? Uh, Mr. Good also suggests and predicts events um, to be happening on Mars that, ap that appear to recreate wars and the negative um, history from Earth. For what? What's the reason for this endeavor? Oh, so you're you're even going back farther to, to where he's talking about like the Mars colonists and there's all these wars and people are being deceived. And so people from Earth, I think, I, I'm not sure if it was the Nazis or not, but... I believe that's what he said. Okay. And so people from Earth are going to Mars, and, and if I'm hearing you correctly, and uh, there's a bit of an accent there, <laughs> um, you know, but I'm hearing you correctly. It's like, well, why would we go to Mars and create wars and do the same things that we do on Earth? Exactly. I, I would just want to escape to something new. And what's the point of this, uh, you know, secret space programs? And I'm just wondering if Mr. Wilcox understands what the word Laika means. Uh, I suspect he might, but he's laika up the wrong tree because he will have people respond to, to what he says. I'm not saying no. However, for the listeners that would be upset with me, okay, prove it to me. Prove it to me that I am wrong. You can't. Yeah, that, that's a big problem that um, Good and Wilcock both have, is the complete lack of proof of any of this stuff. Right. You mentioned a word, Laika. T yes. Talk about that. I I'm not familiar with that. Well, um, it, well, first, I, in my opinion, maybe perhaps Mr. Uh, Wilcox is Russian. Might be Russian. Not that I would hold that against him, because Russians are very intelligent and, in particular, very interested in sp space exploration, uh, maybe uh, to the point of obsession. And Laika was the first dog, I believe, that was sent to space. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So, yep. So you think that um, it's possible that David Wilcock, the blonde-haired guy, could could be uh, possibly Russian or, or influenced in some way? I, I believe he might be, uh, you know, intelligent, and obviously he's listening to these ideas uh, from all over the world. And Russia would be one important place. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in Russia, people really love discussing things like that. And, you know, it's a congratulation. That, you know, if he is Russian, he's doing a really good job. What are your thoughts about um, Corey Good, the insider's insider, the guy who claims to have done all this stuff in the secret space program? What's your read on, on him? Because Wilcock being the interviewer, what's your read oh, on, on Corey Good? Well, I believe Corey Good is, is the one. He's the Russian. Oh, they both could be, because okay. they know how to. Uh, I mean, they're a team. Mm -hmm. That's why I said, you know, Batman and Robin, not in the negative way, but you know, it takes one to make the other one's story more believable and bring out the, uh, you know, his his intelligence. Really, mm -hmm. they're both intelligent, by the way. Yeah, I think that I. I mean, I think they're both pretty smart guys. Yeah, very smart. Mm -hmm. So. Recently, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, I, I put up a video about 20 and back. So, Corey Good, the Insider's Insider, claims that, you know, he spent 20 years in the secret space program doing all this stuff that he's talked about, and then uh, that 20 years was time compressed and regressed and age regressed so that even though he might have been seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 14, 15 years old at the time he went in. Um, it was as if those 20 years happened in five minutes and then he was returned to his parents' house, to his own bedroom as a child. What's your take on that? Well, you know, it's really hard to answer that. Um, sure, there is, uh, time is probably different in space but I find that really hard to believe. How did he get here if he didn't have the ability to, to do his, his mental telepathy when he was young? It just, these are questions that are, need to be answered and probably can't be. Mm -hmm. And so the mental telepathy part, um, 
he claims to be precognitive, so he can apparently, you know, see the future and, and those sorts of things. Was there a part in Cosmic Disclosure um, where you you heard anything about him telepathically traveling? Because my, my read on it was, I thought he was physically picked up in these blue spheres, and he was whisked away in the middle of the night to these different places. Uh, and, and the confusing part for me is is whether that was a real experience that he claims, or if he really was talking more about astral travel or soul travel or telepath, you know, mental telepathic projection. You know, did you get a read on any of that? No, and I know you didn't see a lot of it. No, I didn't see it, but it's. I just don't. I just don't believe it right now. You know, I need more and hopefully he'll make more videos for people to listen because negative or positive, hey, you're getting watched. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I can't say, uh, you know, that's the kind of question that I have trouble answering. Yep, and I think... As he does. I, and, and all of us as well, <laughs> you know, as all of us as well. I mean, I've not yet even seen, he claims, um, Mr. Good claims to have been in the Texas National Guard. Now, there's no reason that I would disbelieve that. Um, however, documents have not been produced, you know, indicating that he was in the Texas State Guard, National or State Guard, whichever one it was. Um, he has produced a document where he was in a FEMA class. He was trained by FEMA for one thing or another. But, uh, you know, anybody in a, in a position where they're caring for the public could enter those classes and be a part of it. And you get a nice little certificate at the end. But it's not like you're part of a super top secret group of people that, you know, is off the books for FEMA, right? Right. I mean, it's, it's a hard situation. It's hard to answer these, these questions because it's possible, but it's probably not. Because, again, there is no proof. Mm -hmm. Prove it. Mm -hmm. What else did, other notes did you take? That's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. The Russian component, I, I don't believe I've heard uh, any of the other good folks out there in YouTube land um, and, and, and in the world, I, I don't believe I've heard anybody mention anything about the Russian component, and I could be wrong. Um, I often say, you know, my opinion, just my opinion, I'm often wrong. Um, but what I, what I wonder is, because I've not heard this connection with... Uh, sort of Russian politics, Russian interest in space and beyond. Tell me or us a little bit more about your, your thoughts in that direction as far as Mr. Good and, and Mr. Wilcox and maybe some possible, your, your own theories, even if they're totally no facts at all. Um, what are your thoughts about that? Because I've never heard any researcher or anybody else mention that. Well, you know, the Russians with their space, um programs in the past, you know, they tried different, uh, you know, animals they sent in space, you know, Laika and then Belka and Strelka and others, and, and of course, Yuri Gagarin. Um, so obviously there is huge interest in space exploration in Russia. And anyone that travels there, you know, it's, you, you, could, you could feel it. They always wanted to be first, and then you have a I believe Mr. Good mentioned something about the American and Russian, um, you know, kind of competition. Mm -hmm. Was that on the moon base that he talked about, or Mars? Well, I don't know. That makes yeah. a difference. Yeah, it's hard to figure. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. both is, uh, you know, explor exploration, space exploration. Of course, the moon being closer, mm -hmm. but who knows? It's easier to take a planet that we don't. We do not uh, travel to just yet and make up stories about it. So I'm not so sure about all that. Do you think that the Russians have their own, like, secret space program? They might. To advance, they might. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. right now, my understanding is that NASA does not have a space program. NASA is just the civilian you know, space uh, agency of the United States, and NASA is now going to, uh, I, I think it's Kazakhstan or something where that's where all of the ships and stuff are taking off and 
you know, coming back from the uh, International Space Station, that that the American Space Agency is actually relying on the Russians uh, to be there, basically their transport. I actually, I don't know that I believe that either. Uh huh. I believe both countries are, you know, still have the competition, and both want to perhaps go to Mars and set up a city, mm -hmm. and not through telepathy. So how are we going to do it? Mm -hmm. That's my question. Mm -hmm. Good. And Mr. Good, um, you know, claims that, that there are hundreds of thousands of slaves underground on Mars. Can you believe that? No. Okay. <laughs> I understand it's frozen under there. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our guest uh, chooses to not go by any name or give any information out about herself. She's aware that uh, I've received death threats. Death threats are flying around. Death threats are flying around the secret space and UFO community. Um, and so uh, hopefully, you know, everybody out there can respect her privacy. She's just given her opinion just like me, and both of our opinions could totally be wrong. One thing that um, has kind of, has kind of, got to me is this concept of disinformation disinformation you know what is disinformation and I looked through some um, googling you know just like many of you you know let's look up disinformation and I I feel like the term disinfo your disinfo, your disinfo, I'm disinfo, is thrown around so much that the term really has lost its original meaning. Now, I don't know the, I don't know how to say it uh, in the language where this word was originally created, but disinformation, in looking at Wikipedia, which is abysmal, I admit that. <laughs> um, Disinformation was a campaign created by the Soviets during the Cold War to keep the public uh, confused through official media programs that are designed to misinform, okay? So, having just kind of talked about the speculation, you know, that you have that maybe David Wilcock and or Corey Good may both be either Soviet, uh, uh, Russian, or influenced by the Russians. It is very interesting how quickly uh, both individuals, their public figures, uh, you know, their public personalities, will call a lot of people like this Dark Alliance um, disinfo. And I've even noticed in my own comment section. You know, in my own videos, people have called me a CIA disinfo agent. You know, and, and which is interesting. And so, uh, and I'd love to see the paychecks. If I, if I was, I'd love to see the paychecks, but it ain't happening. I'm scratching a living just like anybody else. Um, and so, you know, I wanted to kind of get into that because when, when you had mentioned these kind of possible Russian influences, it immediately made me think about the role of disinformation in the larger paranormal uh, exploration community, in the larger field of ufology, as well as the field of uh, legitimate secret space program insiders. I mean, our own United States Air Force has a U.S. Space Command, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so people can Google that up and Google images, and you can look up the patches and the little badges, you know, U.S. Air Force Space Command. And so, um, maybe we could kind of take this back because this really takes another layer of the onion and, and uncovers something that none of us have thought about. So, and I've noticed the accent. Yes, um, I, I tried to lose it, but it's not working. <laughs> and is that because you're a CIA agent trying to... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> not really. Well, uh, I grew up in a Slavic country, Slavic-speaking country, and I have seen brainwashing mm -hmm. as a kid. I went to school there and we knew nothing. I, it was this small town and we, 
we knew nothing about what was, what was happening in the world until maybe months later, sometimes years later. I'm certain that some of the viewers and listeners can relate to that, maybe stories that their grandparents or someone that lived in uh, under communist, communism can relate to and, uh, and shared with them. And strangely enough, we in the small town, we were not communists, none of us were. And the communist government didn't really care about us. So we, if we wanted to, we went to church, and we did whatever we wanted to, but we had nothing to eat. And so that's where your, I watch your uh, program mm -hmm. um, on being self-sufficient in that area. So we, um, we were brainwashed in school. And I, I found that out when I came to, to America. And people used to say, no, no, this is, this is not correct, what you're saying about that the, it's better uh, to have just one person controlling the whole country and the communists controlling it because everyone is equal. And I kept saying that, saying, well, everyone is equal. It is. That's what we were taught in school. And then eventually, it took me a few years, maybe five years before I actually started seeing the brainwashing we had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, so, and so from a standpoint of your previous experience with disinformation and the brainwashing in and of itself from wherever you grew up, are you, just so I can understand correctly, are you saying that that, that same process you observed happening here in these United States? Hmm. Similar to? That's a tough question, but uh, yeah, I believe that right now especially, well, a little bit, a couple of years, a year earlier, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, since the last election. No, uh -huh. the thing is, but right now I believe we're told what to do. Uh, it reminds me of my country that I came from. I'm American now, proud of it. But, um, yeah, mm -hmm. I see it. You know, everything, you can't do this and you can't do that. You have to wear seat belts, which is okay. It probably saves your life, but if a person doesn't want to, that's their choice, I believe. And, yeah, it may affect others' lives, but then again, it may not. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and I, and I appreciate that because that, that kind of life experience, um, especially when you're younger, you know, Corey Good and David Wilcock, they've talked about how they were traumatized. You know, he, it, Corey Good was traumatized as a child, mm -hmm. right? And so he went through all these experiences, you know, and, and, and here you are, right? You know, you grew up in what I'm assuming was a, a communist country, and you, you got out of there. You legally, it sounds like, came yes. Oh, yes. to these United States. and. You know, it's like, here you have somebody who actually did this and lived it and saw what oppression looked like, and then here you have this kind of P.T. Barnum circus guy talking about all this science fiction stuff, right? Well, well yeah, you know, I mean, I was traumatized as a child. He, I'm sure he was traumatized. It makes me think perhaps he, he knows more about Russia than he says, which it's his business. Mm -hmm. But um, we were told as children to listen for the planes. When you hear heavy sounding plane, run home or hide in the ditch. And that was traumatic. And I suspect, you know, so I could relate perhaps to uh, Mr. Good, uh, that how he was traumatized. And then I'm just saying, on the, you know, as an outsider, perhaps he made up a good story. He took some reality. I, I kind of write on the side. So. He took a little fiction, a little non-fiction, make it creative non-fiction, um, and it's a very good, um, very good. You're doing well, although I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, as far as where you see this, uh, this heading, this, as far as where you see this ending up uh, with, with Mr. Good and Mr. Wilcock and this cosmic disclosure process, um, there is a group of Sphere Being Alliance, uh, it's called, and, and I've been told that that's a uh, collection or a group of aliens that uh, are really kind of trying to protect our solar system uh, during this whole awakening process where people are, you know, having these ascension experiences, these spiritual experiences that uh, Mr. Good says are not religious through this blue avian group uh, of extraterrestrials. 
where, you know, we and we talked about a little bit before with the Heaven's Gate cult, mm -hmm. um, where would you, if you had to kind of predict, just as your average, uh, you know, Joe Sixpack or, or Jane Housewife, where would you see this kind of thing going if it was completely contrived, it was completely made up? Well, like everything else, it will pitter out, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. Someone else is going to come up with a better story, and this will be forgotten. But the, the disagreeing, the fighting, I believe you and I are actually helping Mr. Good and Wilcox by keeping it a little bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. It's quite possible. It's quite possible. So d do you want to be addressed? How, how should uh, people think of you when they see this interview in the future? How, how would they want to reference you if they're talking amongst themselves? Do you have a particular name that you feel comfortable talking about? Or, or being referred to as? Well, um, hmm, that's a tough question. But how about Mary Mary quite contrary? Very good. So, any final comments or uh, things that you wanted to put out there for people before we close down for today? Well, yes, a little comment that, you know, we're all interested in, uh, you know, in space and what's out there. But will we see it in our lifetime? Probably not. I'm, I could even say definitely not. Mm -hmm. And what would your wish be? Oh, my wish would be to travel to Mars and see what it's like and feel the cold. Yeah, and I know that's impossible, but hey, maybe someone will come up with a parka that will keep, keep it away. <laughs> <laughs> Very good.